Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson about the basics of magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. This lesson provides an overview of the MRI scanner and what happens during an MRI procedure. We will also briefly cover some terms that will come up frequently in other lessons about MRI. Let's get started. The main components of an MRI scanner include the scanner housing, the bore, the main magnet, gradient coils, radio frequency or RF coils, the patient table, and the computer system. All of these parts work together to create the MRI image. It's important to note that there are other components within the MRI scanner that will be discussed in a different lesson. The scanner housing contains the entire MRI system. It provides structural support, reduces noise during scans, and contains important safety features. The bore is the circular tunnel inside of the MRI scanner where the patient lies during an MRI scan. The bore is where the magnetic field is most uniform or homogeneous, which is crucial for creating clear diagnostic images. The main magnet and the coils surround the bore inside of the scanner housing. There are two configurations of scanners, open bore and closed bore. Open bores are used for patients who may be too claustrophobic for the closed bore. The patient table is what the patient is placed on during an MRI scan. The table can move in and out of the bore and is usually aligned with the magnetic field. Some patient beds are detachable from the system, while other tables are fixed to the bore. The main magnet is the most important component of an MRI scanner. The main magnet creates the strong, uniform magnetic field necessary to create an MRI image. This magnetic field is measured in Tesla, and clinical scanners range in strength from 0.1 Tesla to 7 Tesla. Research scanners can go as high as 45 Tesla. There are three types of magnets used in MRI scanners, permanent, resistive, and superconducting. Superconducting is the most common. The gradient coils in an MRI scanner allow us to manipulate the magnetic field within the bore. Gradient coils modify the magnetic field along different axes or planes, creating variations or gradients in the magnetic field strength across the patient's body. This allows for the MRI scanner to target specific areas of the patient's body for imaging. The radio frequency, or RF coils, transmit radio frequency pulses to the patient. There are also RF receive coils that read the signal from the patient. The RF coils are sensitive to signals coming from different areas of the body, which allows for more detailed diagnostic images. The computer system tells the MRI scanner when to turn on or off the gradient and RF coils, which allows for the creation of pulse sequences used for MR imaging. The computer system is also responsible for processing the data from the MR signal and generating an image. So what happens during an MRI scan? The patient is placed within the bore, which contains the magnetic field, B sub zero. The hydrogen nuclei in the patient's body align either with or against B sub zero. This is similar to how the needle of a compass aligns with the Earth's magnetic field. When RF pulses are applied, these nuclei absorb energy from the pulse. Once the RF pulse is stopped, the nuclei return to their original state, releasing the energy from the RF pulse as a signal that is detectable by the MRI scanner. The released signal is then converted into an image, providing a detailed view of the body's internal structures. MRI differs from other diagnostic imaging techniques like X-ray and CT for several reasons. In X-ray and CT, the signal originates from ionizing radiation outside of the patient's body. In MRI, the signal originates from within the patient's body. Because MRI does not use ionizing radiation, it is safer for repeated use. It provides superior contrast between different soft tissues, making it invaluable for diagnosing conditions in the brain, spinal cord, and joints. However, MRIs are time-consuming and more expensive than other methods. They also have limitations with patients who have metal implants or suffer from claustrophobia, as these patients may be unable to receive MRI scans. When we discuss the physics of MRI, we may use what's called the Cartesian coordinate system. This system uses three axes, X, Y, and Z, to locate points in space. In MRI, it helps us understand how magnetic fields are applied, the behavior of the hydrogen nuclei, and how the body is segmented into slices for detailed imaging, because it offers a clear and structured way to describe positions and orientations in three-dimensional space. Additionally, there are terms that are common to MRI that are necessary to understand. 
Discussing MRI can be somewhat akin to learning a new language, so it is important to familiarize yourself with these terms. First, let's discuss the hydrogen nuclei. We may refer to the hydrogen nuclei targeted in MRI as protium because it is the most common hydrogen isotope and it is the isotope we focus on. We also may refer to hydrogen nuclei as protons. Just know that in the context of these lessons, hydrogen nuclei, protium, and protons may all be used interchangeably. The longitudinal plane is the plane that the magnetic field, B sub zero, lies on, and it usually is in the same direction of the patient. On the Cartesian graph, this is referred to as the z-axis. When the hydrogen nuclei are aligned with or against the longitudinal plane, we say they have longitudinal magnetization. The transverse plane is perpendicular to B sub zero. On the Cartesian graph, this is referred to as the xy-axis, or B sub one. When the hydrogen nuclei are in the transverse plane, we say they have transverse magnetization. Obviously, there are many more terms associated with MRI that we will cover in future lessons, and we will go into more detail about the ones covered here, but these should provide you with a brief overview of common terms used to discuss MRI. In summary, MRI can be a complex and daunting topic. However, the following lessons break down key concepts so they are much more manageable. The MRI scanner consists of several components, including the scanner housing, the bore, the main magnet, gradient coils, RF coils, the patient table, and the computer system, which controls the MRI scanner to both acquire data and analyze the data to create an image. The process of an MRI scan includes placing the patient inside the bore, exposing them to the magnetic field, B sub zero, the hydrogen nuclei in the patient's body align either with or against B sub zero, then applying an RF pulse with the RF transmit coil. Once the RF pulse is switched off, the hydrogen nuclei within the patient release the energy they absorbed from the RF pulse, generating a signal that is received by the RF receiver coil and translated into an image by the computer system.